Hey everyone, let's talk about Ulta Ula. This is the latest output by California-based group Rings of Saturn. They play a totally bonkers style of melodic deathcore that sits in the upper echelon of tech death bands such as The Faceless and Wormed and Spawn of Possession. Their style began focused on writing the most insane and breakneck speed passages with a touch of alien atmosphere, and this sat across the vast majority of their first two albums. There was so much focus on this though that all of the songs would kind of blur together in a massive mind-numbing guitar noodling and incomprehensibly fast drum work. Their third album, Lugal Ki En, saw them using their technical chops more prudently and placing more focus on songwriting and even introducing more subdued passages. Ulta Ula is Rings of Saturn's most refined album yet, expanding on the more subtle and cohesive sound introduced in Lugal Ki En. It's a barrel of spacey fun with tons of slick death metal riffs, crushing and heavy chugging, and breakneck speed noodling. At times, it almost sounds like a mosquito buzzing around your head, or a computer bleeping, or even a laser or two. This album shows a mastery of adding quiet passages into the rest of the album, and playing around with more subdued and stripped back ideas. This gives the album a lot of dynamics, and keeps things fairly interesting through its fairly concise 42 minute runtime. There are several ideas throughout a song, but there is enough repetition that parts of tracks get easily stuck in your head especially when mid-paced melodic riffs are paired alongside the lightning-fast playing. A lot of the riffs could sit comfortably beside cuts from Obscura's Cosmogenesis. Even though they have the technical chops to play at these really incomprehensible speeds, they use it very prudently and craft songs around great melodies and solid song structures. The drums are pretty dynamic, sometimes they sit behind guitars, and other times they show off their ridiculous chops like with the double bass kick in the opener and the furious pummeling on songs like Parallel Shift. The vocals go from a mid-range bark to a really high-pitched snarl delivered with such full force to the point of being almost unintelligible. You're either going to want a lyric sheet with you or forego following the lyrics altogether. Regardless, the delivery is very compelling and memorable. Servant to the Sentience sets the tone of the album by introducing a high-pitched noodling guitar section that sits on top of a quick chugging riff. These lightning-fast riffs are all over the album but are used very prudently. Soon after the intro, they give way to a slick and melodic riff, but return later to add a bit of variety to a melodic passage. They go into the backdrop later as well to make room for a keyboard lead and a guitar solo. The use of short, noodly guitar parts and thick chugs together cements Rings of Saturn with a really unique sound. On Immemorial Essence, a chuggy breakdown is complemented with these high-pitched and noodly sweeps. This is one of the most insane tracks on the album, with lots of switching back and forth between these two vocal styles and the complementing high and low guitar parts. The music itself feels like it's being pulled apart by gravitational waves. It creates a confusing and really head-spinning effect. These mosquito guitars are used on parallel shift as texture for a bit, as well as during the breakdown when they do these quick and dissonant sweeps that sound like lasers being shot off. Grooves and chugs appear fairly often as well, such as the heavy groove introducing parallel shift and the fantastic breakdown in Margitta which is one of the most progressive tracks on the album. It starts off in a really weird fashion with an almost Mars Volta style rhythm, and it has this really teetering melodic passage that transformed into this enormous breakdown that gets built up upon some epic and soaring guitars. The chugs in this breakdown are absolutely nasty and are one of the highlights of the album, especially considering how the track is built around it. The song then goes into the typical Cosmogenesis riff and breaks down into insanity for a bit, and then back into this ridiculous chug from the beginning. It sounds fairly similar to the breakdown in Illustrium's My Possessor and would fit in well with the more chug-based sections on that album. Unfortunately, these breakdowns aren't always this sticky and blood pumping, and about half the time feel it's fairly eh. The breakdown in the opener leaves a lot to be desired and easily stands as one of the weaker parts of the track, along with the simply okay breakdown later in Parallel Shift that plays into one of the catchiest and fun riffs on the album. It has this really weird and bouncy stop and go rhythm. The grooves are used to their advantage though later in the song, when they are built on with a touch of orchestration and a bit of negative space to create this really cinematic feel. The song greatly picks up momentum with this orchestral part and another slick and catchy riff with some blistering drums, but it kinda loses it again when reintroducing this breakdown, although the repetition in the structure makes it more memorable. Prognosis Confirmed suffers the most from this, and is one of the weaker cuts on the album with a lengthy breakdown near the end and melodies that aren't particularly memorable. It's not all bad though, it has a nice synth lead in the middle to break up the head rattling intensity, and there's an interesting rhythm used after the breakdown. What makes this album most memorable, though, is the mid-paced Cosmogenesis style riffing across it. This album is packed full of excellent and aggressive death metal riffs when it isn't in this barrage of heavy chugs and mosquito noodling. 
This is combined with some excellent song flow. Every piece moves organically into the next, and even if it transitions into a weaker part, it never feels jammed in or forced. The ideas are so fluid and they really help to bring some coherency to this madness. The Relic, for example, starts off at breakneck speed with a few nice Cosmo riffs, but knows exactly when to slow it down and bring in a chuggy passage, but not without some mosquito noodling. This song also has some references to melodic death metal, with some simple and catchy arpeggiated riffs. Unfortunately, when they aren't playing some sort of Cosmo riff or a little melodic death metal arpeggio, bits of the track kinda lose their memorability. There's a really crushing breakdown that is one of the better ones on the album later in the track, but it's not quite enough to save the less desirable parts of the song. On top of the song pacing, the overall pacing of the album is superb. Rings of Saturn know exactly when to melt your brain with ferocity and when to reel it in to give room to breathe. This makes the album significantly more listenable. There's a really nice and surprising palate cleanser after the intense barrage of the first two tracks and this really short and beautiful flamenco instrumental called Unhallowed. It's really beautiful and it's very fun, and it's a nice break from the totally bonkers deathcore that surrounds it. The transition back into heavier material is extremely startling and unsettling though, jumping right back into noodly mosquito riffs and ridiculous intensity for the next few songs. Then the last part of this album plays around with this really freaky sideshow theme that almost sounds like the windmill theme from Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time, or something that Arturus would use on one of their albums. Margetta ends with this ambience and it transitions into this freak show instrumentals that bookend the Harvest and begin the macrocosm. Harvest has the most alien riff on the album that peeks in its head every now and then with this huge chug in the background underneath this really wailing, weird, and dissonant riffing. The song insanely compresses and decompresses itself and has some of the fastest vocal delivery on the album. The sideshow theme shows up every now and again, tying together all the different passages of this song. It also features this really grand solo that's bookended by this new freaky synthesizer. This song is one of the best at building tension and does a great job of managing all the dynamics present. After this, the macrocosm does a beautiful reprise of the freaky theme surrounding the harvest. There are several relaxed parts that even sound like the title track from Dark Tranquility's The Gallery with some smooth and relaxing drum work. It has lots of subdued and melodic instrumentals and is devoid of the brain melting insanity that's across the rest of the album. It ends with the theme from The Harvest played on piano, and then the next track, Inadequate, reintroduces it with some guitar as well. Of course from there it explodes into chuggy madness, and then there's a synth lead that reads, leads the rest of the track with a hint of eastern melody to it. A piano part breaks up the madness before introducing some fast guitar work and two separate breakdowns before ending the album suddenly. The vocals are a low-range bark that are complemented by a really high-pitched snarl. Both sound good, but it's almost impossible to discern the lyrics. This is because they're delivered in such an over-the-top way that there is more focus on delivery than there is on sharp articulation. This may also be done, though, to sort of exacerbate this whole alien theme that pervades across the album. Servant to this sentience is about an advanced civilization that creates this inferior species that eventually becomes sentient, and Immemorial Essence talks about bending time to see the future. The Relic is about a character that sacrifices themselves to gain knowledge from this sacred alien structure, the last part of the album, starting with Margitta, revolves around the theme reminiscent of Misanthrope by Death, which talks about aliens watching humanity from afar in disgust. Rings takes this a little further, though, and describes the retaliation by the aliens by beginning to wipe out humans for their own benefit and harvest, vowing to destroy them and prognosis confirmed, and actually finishing this task with the sudden end of Inadequate. It's a pretty disgusting tale that stays true to the Rings of Saturn's self-proclaimed alien core. Overall, this album is a huge breath of fresh air for Deathcore, and it combines everything that makes Deathcore worthwhile with the classic sound of technical death metal. Rings of Saturn have completely outdone themselves with this album, and if they can be more creative with writing their breakdowns, then they may have a perfect album on the way. I'm not typically a huge fan of Deathcore, but this album has me very interested to see what Rings of Saturn are going to do next, and what they're capable of with their next release. If you like your music aggressive, dissonant, and totally crazy, then you'll find a lot to love here. If you don't really care for Deathcore or you don't want technicality pushed to the limit, then this release may be a little grating sometimes. I can't recommend it enough though. What did you think of this album? I would love to know your thoughts if you loved it or you weren't into it much or whatever. Also, let me know what albums I should look at next. Thanks for listening everyone. Tune in next week for a review of Accidentally Touching the Squishy Part of a Jellyfish. I'll see you guys next time.